All right, guys, got my TRX4 here, and um, I don't know, something's not quite right. This front shock shaft is either bent or something's going on because it's not moving anymore. So we'll just whip that apart and have a little look. Oh, two shocks. Oh, that's really sticky. That's hard smooth. That's horrible, that one. And that one. Well, let's get one whipped off first, have a little look in there and see what's going on. I'm going to use my electric screwdriver thingy majig here. If you want to know where you get that from, link in description. Alright, let's have a little look in there, see what's going on. God, that's, oh, that's awful. That is so tight, guys. Look, that's, that's, oh. I don't think the shaft's bent. Something else going on in there. And I've got a feeling it's going to be in this part here. Hmm. Well, that moves nice. Now, what's going on there, guys? Let's get that lid cracked open. Can't believe that is so tight. That barely moves. All right, so with this shock, you've got to take this bottom bottom link off first and you have to pull the shaft out through the top. No biggie, get yourself some side cutters and just hold hold it right on the end. Because that way, even if you mark it on the shaft there, that never goes that far into the seal. So you'll be all right. So just hold that right on the end like that. I actually got that tip from my old Tamiya model when I built a Manta Ray years ago. What you definitely don't want to do, guys, is hold it halfway up the shaft and then scratch it up. So you definitely don't want to hold it here somewhere. God, how can that be so tight? It's like seized up. It doesn't look bent the shaft. Is that strange? That is really strange. I don't know what's going on there, guys. God. All I can think is, has this piston expanded? Or broke, or something. That's all I can think what it could be. And actually looking at this piston, look, there's no holes. There's just little grooves on the side. And I'm kind of thinking... Well, to be honest, guys, I haven't got a clue. I don't know why that's gone tight in there. Now let me just screw that thing back on the end a little bit. That's mad. That's crazy guys. And that can be so tight. Right, so that's definitely not the shock shaft, that is a piston on the barrel of this, what's making it go tight, look. So, I think what we're going to have to do is get that piston and just shave it down a little bit. Then I'm going to get a bit of wet and dry paper and just lightly rub that piston down a bit all the way around. It's getting better. Still tight, but I want that to be silky smooth in there. So if you look at that now, look. Just trying to get that to focus. These little grooves on there. 
and they're almost gone now. So what I'm guessing what's happened is somehow this plastic piston has expanded slightly. That's what's made it go tight in here. Yeah, that's nice now. Nice-ish. Maybe take a little bit more off. And because there's not much of a groove now, that's probably going to make the shock action really stiff. And I want smooth shocks on this. So I'm going to get a hacksaw or something and just groove these down a tiny bit. Just so it all goes through there a little bit easier. Right, that's pretty good now. I've got this little rotary tool, not very expensive these. I'll put a link in the description as well for these if you want one guys, from Amazon. Good thing is with this, it's got a variable speed. You can turn that right down. Maybe a bit more. No, that's better. I think what I'm going to do, I'll just take the grooves right down until it touches the um, this E clip here. So at least then we can try and make all the shocks fairly consistent. Alright, fits in there fairly nice. Put it back together again and see what it's all about. That in there, I don't think there's nothing wrong in there. So we can leave that be. Hmm. Maybe we'll leave that out for now just to put the shock shaft through so we don't damage the seals. It's where this trusty brake cleaner comes into handy again. I wouldn't, I'd keep it away from these seals though, because it might make them expand. So I wouldn't get any on there, just in case. Right, that's lovely now. If you look back at my other video, I put a much lighter shock oil in here to make the shocks a little bit smoother. It's worth when you're assembling shocks just to put a little bit of oil on the actual shaft itself. I'm just going to give it a smoother operation later on. So seal, spacer, seal. And also by taking these seals out, you're not going to damage this seal here. Because when this is all compressed down and then you try and push the shaft through, you can damage that seal. Yeah, that's not bad. It's not the smoothest of shocks. It's, it's quite tight. I mean, what you could actually do, if you want to make them super smooth, you could make that black seal in there. You could, you could shave that down a little bit to make it thinner. Because what the, the thickness of that governs how much these seals here are compressed. And when it's left fairly loose, look, that's really smooth. But you're going to be more likely to lose oil through the seal. When it's tight, it's a little bit tighter, but the oil's going to stay in there for longer. So it all depends what you want. If you want super smooth shocks and you don't mind topping them up every now and then, then you can go ahead and definitely put a thinner washer in there or shave that one down a little bit. That black one, by the way, not the, not the O-ring. Leave the silicone O-ring the way it is. And I'm just talking about this plastic washer thing, what's in there. Anything's got to be better than what it was before. So it's, get, it's filled up again. And wait, actually, I should have put this back on first. Come on, bubbles, out you come. Yeah, that's a problem with these shocks, guys. They hydrolock so easy. Look at that. There's no bladder or anything in there at all. People say how much they like these shocks, but I don't know, I'm not a fan if I'm honest. See, look, hydrolocked. 
and we've got to let more oil out now but the trouble is you let oil out air's going to get in so it's impossible really to build these shocks without letting in the air in if you know a way how guys let me know right that's definitely got air in there but that's gonna have to do that up just until you, there's no more thread visible on the shaft and that's job done all right not perfect but it's a million times better than what it was Right, it's better than it was. Just got to rebuild this back one now, because that one's sticking. We'll do that one off camera. And actually, I'm actually going to go around and do all four shocks. And then I'll turn you back on when that's all done. All right, guys, all back together again. Much better. Perfect. All right, let's give it a little blast. Uh-oh, busted it guys. Try to get out the focus there for you. I think what happened, I landed a jump and left the power on. Uh, same as any RC car guys, when it's in the air, just before you're about to land, make sure you're neutral throttle. No brakes on, no accelerator on. So you're gonna brake something. And I think I've got spares for that. But these are all my TRX4 spares in here. Oh, 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 I've got to have some guys. I'm sure I went through these boxes before and saw it. So I got all this stuff coming the other day and I've not had a chance to go through it yet. So I'm not really fully sure what I got. But I'm pretty sure I did look through and had those drive cup things somewhere. Oh! Oh ho ho! Oh ho ho guys! Check it out! We have them! I've got three or four there, so <laughs> I can carry on playing. Let's get one fitted and see how easy they go in. Well, I've never changed one of these before, guys, so I've got to make up as I go along. Make sure I do the right side. Yep, yeah, that side. How hard can it be? Guys, whenever you've got to fix something, don't be scared to take stuff apart. If you're really that shy to take bits apart, then just, just take pictures with your phone. What's this? What's that in there? Uh -huh. Just take pictures of your phone, and then you can remember how they go back together later on. I'm not even sure if this bit's got to come off or not. Probably not, actually. All right, leave that loose for now, just in case. I think we've got to take this knuckle off, pretty sure. Or... Or... Yeah, we'll take it off, that's going to make it easier. Now 
Another thing you can do, guys, if you don't want to forget where screws go, you can just sort of put them back in where you're taking them out. So if you just loosely put them in, now you can remember where they came from. Right, these are the little bushes that sit in here, top and bottom. That's easy to remember. Put it off to the side, and now we'll work on this. If you put your parts onto like a bit of a kitchen paper or something, it just makes it easier to work on. You can see your parts easier. It absorbs any dirt and moisture and stuff, and it stops everything rolling off your table. So we're going to have to open this portal box up. And by the looks of it, that's just these screws that go all the way around the outside. That makes the job so much easier having one of these drivers, guys. Have a look down below if you want to see a link to where you can get them from, off of Amazon. That's where I always buy my stuff, Amazon. And probably these have to come off as well. Are they the same length screws? Yep, that's handy. All the screws are the same length. And hopefully that'll pop open. Will it pop open? Yeah, hey, hey. that's actually really simple in there. And this part here, will that just pop out? Or not? Maybe we've got to take these two screws out of here that hold this bearing in. Hmm. Ah, I'll just screw there. Hmm. Quite tight on there. I don't know if that's where it's shattered, it's made it tighter. Or if it's supposed to be. Oh no. Yeah, it's coming off. There we go. We'll get our brand new part. Luckily, because I've lost a pin, it comes with a spare barrel and a new pin. Which is perfectio. Even though the old barrel, there's nothing wrong with that by the looks of it. I'll probably just leave that in there. While this is a part, it's probably worth putting some grease inside here. Because if I start going through any water, that's just going to just help it a little bit. If any does get in there, just to keep it off the gears. But I don't know. I suppose what well, I'll put grease into this one, and I'll leave the other ones as they are, and then we can compare later on. I'm really not in the mood to take the whole lot apart. in there right that'll do and then that must go back in there that was, that was really easy actually guys that wasn't very hard at all A lot easier than I thought. I was a bit scared to get inside these portal boxes to start with, so they look fairly complicated, but actually they're not. That's even something you could probably fix when you're out and about. Keep a couple of spare parts in your bash sack. And now I've done this one, it's gonna be a lot quicker to you know to do another one. It's probably take me five minutes on this side. If I do another one, it's probably only going to take me a couple of minutes now because I know what I'm doing. 
That's the best way to learn, guys. If you're not sure how to do something, just do it. And you soon learn. And if you mess something up, then you learn from your mistakes, didn't you? It's all good. Alright, what I'm going to do is do it up most of the way with this electric drill. Not all the way though, because I like doing the last little bit by hand just so we don't strip out any of these threads. Right, so this part here, I, I never did have to take that off in the end. I'll do that up again. All right, that turns nice and freely. So I'll take these screws out of here now so I can remember where they go. They're the only screws left. Top and bottoms are the same. Put this bush back in here. Oh, all right, maybe I'll put this in first and then put the bush back in. I don't know if it's gonna be fiddly, getting that to locate with a diff again. Oh, someone's turned up. <laughs> Who's this idiot? <laughs> yeah, look, at my, look at this meat on the tyre now. Alright, interruption's gone, and we'll just bolt this thing back up. Oh, guys, she's all good again. We got AS Steve. Never played with a crawler before. We're trying to get him into it, so see if he likes the TRX4. Mm. It goes over the bumps much better with a thinner shot bottle. Come on. In the comments, guys, who thinks hey, Steve should get a crawler? <laughs> but it's a challenge to get it in without your toppling. Two techniques, you can either back it up and nail it, or you gotta do the whole lot at an angle. Hey! Well He's in! Ah, here we go. I know what you're trying to do, you're trying to get that wheel on there, weren't you? Sometimes you take the diff blocks out, it steers easier. Because oh. the diff blocks make it hard to steer sometimes. Go through. What do you mean, then? You get, you're getting one? Oh, I don't know. 
video guys if you did give us a thumbs up subscribe hit that bell button see you soon